Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we are jumping into Aparillo by Sugar Bites. Here's a taste of what this sounds like. Aparillo is an FM synth. And what makes it mega cool is this Orbit page. You're going to quickly wish that any synth you had had this. Uh, let's go ahead, let's jump through some presets. nice right so this orbit page is downright incredible you have the orbit page and each one of these things is a parameter that exists inside of the synthesizer which is over here we have a couple other tabs here for effects our envelopes we have our operators and we have our fm and you can see there's some very artistic interpretations going on here of how these controls are working they're also really straightforward you can see the exact modulation that's happening really cool uh, but you'd be surprised, a lot of the time, you can just mess with the Orbit page and get something that's downright cool. So for example, let's take this patch, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the amount that each one of these things has control over it. So when I move my red dot into each one's individual radius, they'll get a different amount of control. And if you right click, you can actually set these by hand if you want. So let's come in here, change our amounts, and let's try out our different sound. Let's go ahead and do it again. Probably the filter. Oh yeah. So let's take you through a couple more presets. So hopefully you get the idea. And now you don't need to just move the red dot. We can also record a movement. So let's just record one. Maybe we're gonna come down here. We know that that's kind of quiet. So move up here. I'm moving kind of fast just for the sake of demonstration. And then now that it's been recorded, we can come in here and say, hey, play what we recorded. And we'll also tell that we were done. And it's, it's doing it on its own. Now you can of course, automate this in your track and move that around. Let's go for a couple more sounds, shall we? So if you watch a review or an ad, a lot of people push the cinematic and it's because this thing does excel at cinematic textures, like big time. Very cool. Now these three have to do with filters. And so you might not want these all next to each other. So you can actually move them away. This is, this is why I was like, man, I wish other synths had this kind of flexibility. Like, holy cow, this is cool. Now you might not want that much verb, but there's actually several things in here that give it such a lush space. So. If we come into our effects tab, and I'm going back and forth between these menus, if you go to orbit, the tabs disappear, which at first for me was kind of disorienting, like where they go. It's right here. This is what I'm clicking to go back. So in the effects, we have a reverb, a delay, a spatializer, and then we have our filter and also a panner. And our panner also includes a width parameter, which is really nice. I really dig that. So. These things are all contributing to such the such a wide space. So sometimes you want to tone these things back. 
bring the feedback back. And also often, most of these have long release times on their envelopes. So there's only two operators. This whole thing's being generated from just two operators and the wonders of FM. It's the genius modulation and the great care taken to give you control over all these little details that make it so cool. Like if you click on anything, there'll be additional menus you can come in and alter things to your specific liking. And there's a lot of, if you, I actually read the manual for some of this because the manual has some things in there that I think are just awesome because it the artistic intention sort of comes through. If this doesn't do it, like for example, they say, as you move the red dot closer to an object, the animation becomes impassioned. Or it says something to that effect. It also talks about the arpeggiation settings sitting on top of the LFO area like a crown. And I was like, who, whoever wrote this? I did, I, cause I don't remember who, I don't know if it was the designer or not. Cause I was just looking through it. They're amazing. A plus for awesome manual writing. Let's look through some different sets here. Let's go through some different sounds. Let's go to uh, brass, brass turd. <laughs> Let's check out some, oh, we got some Hollywood stuff. Let's see. So this one, it doesn't have it on because it's obviously going for something pretty specific. It's using the shift option here. If you click here, this little icon, you're actually able to have it basically play the notes that you write in. And that's also controlled by this guy right here. You see they share the same symbol, so it's kind of straightforward. This is one of those things you'll probably want to turn on and off too. You can right click on them and move them. But if we want to activate this and just see what we can get out of it, uh, which is really, I'd like to point this out, just workflow wise, it makes a lot of sense to be able to just move the objects around and sort of work with that instead of fiddling with individual specific parameters. So it's really cool to have this as an option. Uh, if we come to the cog icon and we could just do it by, I just clicked it, and I've changed the amounts. So as I move the red dot around, we see that they are now going to move. Let's see what we've done here. I wanna move the objects around, but if I move them around by just clicking the background, they tend to get clumped up a lot of the time. And also things tend to stay next to each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna randomate, randomate, randomize where those are. So opens up worlds of effects and it's just a great starting point uh, for you pick a preset and then away you go, right? Oh my goodness, this alien spaceship. Oh. <laughs> this guy had way too much fun making his sounds. Now this, so this is a sort of a good demo here. As I move, as I put down new notes, we see that it moves along here. So each one of these columns is actually a note. We're able to control per note what exactly is going on via the LFO controls down here. And also we have an arpeggiation control that will scoot us along as we go. And we have various trigger options for both. Like here we can have like, oh, the MIDI, collision, or free. Obviously, this was designed with MIDI in mind, so if we click notes, we progress. If you hit a bunch of notes, you'll move down the note rails here, the note columns. Uh, we have our two FM operators here and different algorithms that will set them up in various configurations. And it makes sense because FM, right, will create these complex textures and having things modulate over time just it totally fits with FM, like it, cause that's how real sounds do it. So it makes sense to have something like this. Uh, 
I want to show you some of the bells. They, there are some cool sounding bells in here. Let's go for a uh, tiny piano. Why not? Let's, uh, let's turn this guy on. These have to do with the modulation amounts. Let's go, let's change their radius and let's also change their uh, position. So there's a taste of Aparillo. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Yeah.